Alright, so after you've gotten your lines completed, you want to go inside and touch it up a little bit and erase out some of the uh, extra lines that overlap each other, like this. Just clean it up a little bit. You don't have to clean it too much because when you're viewing the drawing, you're actually not going to see much of that detail. And also, it helps to do this part at the end of your lines because this will speed up your drawing process a little bit. Alright, make sure you close off all the gaps like this so that every element is its own kind of uh, sectioned off part so that when you fill in the colors, it doesn't bleed into other parts like this would be the neck and this would be the hair. So you want to close off that gap. We are going to fill in the colors for every single element in the drawing. And what we're going to do is we're going to separate every color with a different layer. So down here, create a new layer. Keep it underneath the lines again. Set your lines to multiply. The first one I like to do is the skin tone. And you don't have to be so um, particular or like so specific with the color, just something general. I like to stay around up here, a little light, a little warm, a little cool. It's right there, right between the red and the orange. So nothing too specific because we're, we can adjust those colors later. Alright, there are many ways you guys can color. I'm going to go through all of them. And these methods also apply to Photoshop techniques. So the first way you can color is using your pen tool. Uh, click the G pen, make it big, and on the, the skin layer, just paint it in. Just have it bleed through like that. And then you would go to your eraser tool and erase it out. All right, so technique number two was a technique that I used for a while. Um, you would go to your line layer, select the magic wand, and that would be W. This is the magic wand here, that's the symbol. And what you can do is, on the, uh, on the line layer, click on the space here that you wanted, then go back down to the skin layer, and that'll keep it in like those lines like that. So we can repeat that same technique again using the, the wand layer, the wand tool. And I still actually use this technique for uh, Photoshop. So go to your line layer, wand tool, that area, and you will use the paint bucket. But what we have in uh, Manga Studio is the options are right here. So after you select your wand on the section, you're going to just click this paint bucket and it fills in with uh, whatever color that you have down here. And then number four, so I haven't seen this feature yet on Photoshop, but this is what makes uh, Manga Studio really stands out. Over here, click on referring layer, and you're gonna turn this layer up here as the referring layer so that when you're filling underneath, it'll act as if you're on the line layer. See, this, this little symbol here will tell you that the uh, referring layer is on, on the long layer. This is the referring layer, so see how that jumped up? And it's important to have colors, uh, your, your colors on a separate layer because if you, if you start coloring in, like I just did here, I think. yeah, I just colored in here on the wrong layer for the line layer. So this, if you're doing that to your lines, um, it's gonna be a lot more difficult to edit later. But if you're on the, if you're on a separate layer, then it's separate. You can adjust it however you want. And just quickly, we can also um, do the lock transparent layer. And by having the color separate, what you can do is you can do the lock transparent layer. And with this this option setting here, with that option on you can basically draw whatever you want on that layer and it'll only affect the area that you've painted previously. 
that makes sense. Let me turn that off because right now I can't draw on anything else. So if I had stuff over here, over here, like this, and then I turn the lock transparent on, oh, I have to use a different color. And you can see how that is really useful. So making mistakes like this will also teach you guys what not to do. Um, painting on the line later will be will, will work for some people if you're like painterly and you just want to go straight on and you're not and you're really committed and you just want to keep painting on top of your original piece. That's fine as well. And it's a little more difficult to do though. All right, I'm gonna teach you another tool that uh, we won't be really using on this, but if you wanted to delete something like this and it's on the line layer, you can select that area like this, and then you can click this button here, and that'll clear it. In Photoshop, you would press delete, but delete doesn't work on this, so you'd have to use this button here to clear. Another nice way you can delete it is um, click on this transparent button and that'll make whatever you're drawing on into a transparent uh, piece. So you're basically making this uh, these pixels transparent and uh, essentially deleting it. Or the standard way is you know taking your eraser and just erasing it with your eraser. So go back to your colors layer, your skin layer. So let's label that skin. Get your paint bucket. And up here it says refer only to editing layer. And right here it says referring layer. And if it doesn't work, if it starts bleeding outside of the drawing, you're going to have to adjust the color margin and the color gap. Okay, so continue filling in all the different colors and creating new layers for every object you're drawing. So if you're doing shorts, make a new layer, hair, different layer. Now, now I'm pretty sure Photoshop has that referring layer option. I just have yet to find it. In my 10, 10 years of using Photoshop, I don't think I've discovered it yet, but that could be because of my lack of uh, effort. So in my process of selecting colors, it's not so arbitrary, but it is very just general, just to get your colors down. And again, you can al always edit your colors later very easily, and I'll show you guys how. And the methods for choosing color, it's uh, pretty straightforward. Um, you can actually color pick uh, drawings that you've done before, or drawings from books, or illustrations somewhere. And just use the eyedropper tool, which is the eye button. And the eyedropper tool in Manga Studio is a bit different from Photoshop. Click that, and then you would select their color, and then use it. And this is a great technique for harmonizing your colors so that everything looks unified because the other artists got their colors, you know, correct and nice and perfect. You also want to, you also can abbreviate your names like W2, wristband 2, this, this is wristband 1. So I'm on the belt layer and again I'm going to be using two separate colors on the same layer. Just to simplify it a little bit. Now I'm constantly leaving like these kind of gaps here. You can fill it in with the pen tool, like this. But I'm gonna show you a technique where you guys just it, it covers it all pretty much uh, in the end. I'm doing two separate colors for her iris and the eye whites, the white areas. Because when we change the colors of her eyes, we don't want it to affect the iris. So this may be kind of tricky because you're painting in white on top of white. So you don't really think you're doing it, so you go over here, so let's pretend like you did it. Alright, so let's clean up and fill in those extra little gaps before we uh, begin modifying the colors a little. So what you can do, number one, is uh, first go over the colors just by um, selecting the layer for that color, taking your pen tool, and just filling in oh, with that color, of course. Like that. Filling it in, little uh, little spots missing. Always remember your, to be on the right layer. You don't want to start filling in red on this layer when it's the shorts layer. If you feel like you're missing colors and you don't want these gaps to show up, what you can do is 
number one is you can basically take the wand tool and highlight everything around her like this, like this. Holding up to shift, uh, selecting everything that is outside of the line. So on the line tool, like that. You don't want the edge of the line, you know, from the black here to the to the selected area. To fix that, you want to expand the selection area. So go to expand. Let's try 0.40 and we hit OK. See how it went in a little bit? And we don't want it to go in so much, so let's try it again, selection area. Expand the area, try 0.30. Like this. And what we're doing here is we're going to fill in an entire layer just with her silhouette. Now you could have done this in the beginning, of course, so beginning at the end doesn't really matter. I'm going to use a brown color, I think that would be nice. And what this is going to do is basically fill in everything outside of the figure. Which is not what I wanted to show you. What we'll have to do next is basically flip. We're going to have to flip that selection first. So we've, we've expanded the lines in inwards, and next we have to flip the lines. So we click on reverse selection area, um, that would be the inverse. For Photoshop you would hit Command Shift I if you're using a Mac. I don't know what it is for the uh, PC, so sorry guys, sorry, sorry, I'm sure you guys can figure it out. So what I've just done is I flipped the selection so that when I fill in the color, it now fills in the inside. And of course you can't see it because all that colors, you know, in the way. By holding down Option and clicking the eyeball, you can see what it's filled in. See? Ta-da! Like that. Now why did it? Why did it just stop there? Because I used the paint bucket tool, and it's referring to our line layer still. We don't want that. We want to just fill in all of the space within that uh, selected area. Okay, so fill it in by. Um, click in this paint bucket here and if you look over here over here I'm gonna click it and it filled it in see now if, if you notice the difference if I turned it off look at the lines see all these little gaps in here stuff like that they're all filled in automatically the little tidbits and corners is what we're trying to get at like this see keep your eye right here I'm gonna turn it off and it, it, it just punches your lines, get them a little darker and fuller looking. Turn it off, turn off your uh, selection by pressing Command D. And now I'm going to actually modify some things. You know, you want to try to take care of this actually um, when you're still working on the lines. But this line's looking a bit dark. So I'm going to use the eraser tool and just take it off. Again, when I when I erase it off, you'll see the, uh, you'll see the silhouetted area right there. That, that would be the brown area. We don't want to go in too deep, otherwise we'd have to erase the silhouette area so that it doesn't, you know, show through. I just want to keep the lines semi-consistent. See how I, I erase this area and you'll see the silhouetted area underneath. That's because the skin color only covered up to the line as, as the line was our referring color, referring layer, excuse me. So again, make sure you polish up your lines, you know, the best you can. 